Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. Okay, right, so let's recap what we've seen so far. Okay, let's go back onto the other page. We have seen that the initial trigger for atherosclerosis is some sort of damage to the endothelial cells, whether this be uh, toxic chemicals that have come from cigarette smoke, whether it's high blood pressure that's consistently crushing the endothelial cells, or whether it might be hyperglycemia, uh, which you would see in uncon badly controlled diabetes. Okay, right, uh, that causes these endothelial cells to start putting this signaling molecule, VCAM1, on their surface which stands for uh, vascular cell adhesion molecule 1. Okay, now that causes monocytes in the bloodstream, which is a type of white blood cell, uh, to bind to the VCAM1 because they have a complementary protein known as very late antigen 4 or VLA4 on their surface. So they bind and then they move across the endothelium, they move between the gaps of the endothelial cells into the subendothelial space, which is the space between uh, the basement membrane here in turquoise and the internal elastic lamina here in red. Okay, so we now have these monocytes which are on the, uh, in the subendothelial space. Now, um, the endothelial cells do more than just put um, VCAM1 on their surface. They also start producing this MCSF, or this monocyte slash macrophage colony stimulating factor, which is also known as CSF1, or colony stimulating factor 1. And this causes the macrophage, uh, sorry, the monocyte here in blue, to differentiate into a macrophage. Now, ma the macrophage is there on the understanding that there is some horrible pathogen that needs killing. So, it starts producing horrible poisons, one of which is this molecule uh, known as superoxide. It starts producing superoxide. And superoxide is this molecule that really wants to gain an extra electron. Okay, now, the other part of this story is that when the endothelium gets damaged, by mechanisms that aren't fully understood, uh, low-density lipoproteins are allowed to move across the endothelium and also accumulate in the subendothelial space here. Okay, now, You've got this superoxide that the macrophages are producing, meeting this uh, low-density lipoprotein that has been accumulated in the subendothelial space. Now, superoxide is an extremely reactive molecule. It's a horrible molecule, a very dangerous molecule. And uh, basically, it is going to interact with the components of the low-density lipoprotein, which is mainly lipids. And it's going to oxidize the lipid molecules uh, in that low-density lipoprotein particle to produce us a particle of oxidized low-density lipoprotein, which literally just means a low-density lipoprotein uh, particle where, where the components of that lipoprotein particle have been oxidized, so the lipid molecules within it have been oxidized. Now, when you have oxidized LDL, let's turn over, uh, that can be taken up by these macrophages that have also accumulated in the subendothelial space. And uh, the macrophages have a scavenger receptor on them, which is going to allow them to gradually remove the lipids out of the oxidized uh, LDL particle and store them in vesicles inside their cytoplasm. This is going to cause these macrophages to become massive, great, round, fat, blobby cells known as foam cells, which are full up with vesicles which contain these lipid molecules, some of which will be oxidized. Okay, now, what you get is loads of macrophages, therefore, in the subendothelial space, which are full up with uh, this, um, this, these lipids that are stored in vesicles within their cytoplasm. So, the lipid core, as it's called, of an atherosclerotic plaque is indeed made up of these foam cells. And this structure that we've so far described the formation of, this might be called an early, an early atheroma, or an early atherosclerotic plaque. Atheroma. Okay, 
So we're going to now see how this further develops because more happens. Because as I said at the end of the previous video, um, this isn't hard at the moment. This is a squishy lump, basically. It's not going to harden your arteries. So we want to now see what is it that causes the sclerosis, the hardening of your arteries. Okay, um, and I also just want to add that this is a perpetuating cycle, basically, because the foam cells now and again will die, basically, because of the oxidized LDL, uh, well, the oxidized lipids that they have taken up. And when they die, they're going to release loads of damage-associated molecular patterns, which, by the way, are abbreviated to DAMPs, usually. And these damps are going to further drive uh, the inflammatory response, i.e. it's going to drive more monocytes to come in here, more LDL to come in here, and drive the formation of more foam cells. So once it's begun, it's going to continue, basically. Okay, now what we want to look at is the formation of what's known as the fibrous cap. Okay, so for that, we need to draw the portion of the blood vessel that is below this, because remember, this is all happening in the tunica intima. So, down here is the internal elastic lamina, which, remember, demarcates the end of the tunica intima and the start of the next layer, the tunica media. So this is the internal elastic lamina here, internal elastic lamina. And then, after the internal elastic lamina, what you have is a layer of smooth muscle cells, which is the tunica media. So, in here, you have loads of smooth muscle cells, which, remember, are these spindle-shaped cells here. So, these are smooth muscle cells, vascular smooth muscle cells in particular. So, vascular smooth muscle cells are often abbreviated to VSMCs, uh, for vascular smooth muscle cells. Okay, so here are our vascular smooth muscle cells here. And the next portion of this process is going to involve these vascular smooth muscle cells big time. So we'll give them their own color. So these vascular smooth muscle cells are in orange here. Basically, what happens is when you produce these foam cells, so far, the picture I've portrayed of these foam cells is that they're just big, blobby, inert, um, silly cells. But in fact, they are not so silly. Well, they're, they're basically uh, not so innocent. They're not just these inert cells that I painted them to be. They're going to start producing a whole host of uh, signaling molecules, basically. So here comes a signaling molecule. And there are a whole host of these molecules that they're going to start releasing. So uh, to keep it nice and simple, what I'm going to do is just give these all one name and we're going to call them cytokines, okay? So cytokines, it just means an inflammatory signaling molecule. So it's going to release a huge host of horrible molecules that are going to uh, cause a reaction in these vascular smooth muscle cells, okay? So these cytokines are going to cause the vascular smooth muscle cells to migrate towards the cause of the disturbance, basically. They're going to migrate over here. So the vascular smooth muscle cells are basically going to leave the uh, tunica media, and they're going to cross the internal elastic lamina into the tunica media here, uh, sorry, the tunica intima here. So this layer here is the tunica intima. From the internal elastic lamina to the endothelial cells, this is the tunica intima. Okay, so tunica intima. Right, okay, so uh, these vascular smooth muscle cells are going to come into the tunica intima, and what they're going to do is they're going to change their function hugely. So let's say here we have our vascular smooth muscle cell here, which has shrunk a little bit, just so that I can fit it into the picture. So here is our orange vascular smooth muscle cell that has now come into the tunica intima, into this sub-endothelial space again. Okay, right. Now, what's it going to do? It's no longer going to contract, basically. Here, their role was contraction. Now, what it's going to start doing is it's going to set up its own little production factory. It's going to start producing a huge amount of connective tissue. So these vascular smooth muscle cells that have migrated, what they start doing is producing connective tissue. So how should I show connective tissue? I'll show it as fibers. They're starting to produce 
fiber after fiber after fiber. All of these fibers, I should be doing this in color so that they actually show up. Um, what color should I do it in? Red, I think. So they're producing these fiber after fiber after fiber. All of these fibers, they're producing all of this connective tissue. Right. And what they're going to do is they're going to basically form a cap over this uh, huge mass of foam cells here. And it's just a mass of connective tissue that is covering, um, covering this sort of lipid core, as we're going to call it in a moment, of uh, the atherosclerotic plaque. So these smooth muscle cells come into the subendothelial space and they start producing connective tissue. So here, they're producing loads and loads of connective tissue. And what this does is it has the effect of producing, basically, a really rigid cap over this mass of foam cells that's at the center. OK, so this is a huge, great cap, sorry, a huge, great cap that you're forming over this entire mass of foam cells. And this is what's known as the fibrous cap, basically. OK, so the fibrous cap. So this is what makes an atherosclerotic plaque hard. You have this really rigid structure covering all of the squashy foam cells within, okay? And it's produced by these vascular smooth muscle cells which move from the tunica media where they usually are resident into the subendothelial space and they start producing this connective tissue which encapsulates the, um, the lipid core, as we're going to now call it. So these foam cells in the center, these squashy foam cells, this is known as the lipid core of the atherosclerotic plaque. Okay, and it's covered by this rigid cap of connective tissue. So this is now an atherosclerotic plaque. It's this mass of foam cells covered by a uh, very, very large amount of connective tissue that forms the fibrous cap. That is an atherosclerotic plaque, and it's formed in this tunica intima. So often people refer to this as a, the formation of a neo intima because you've had a huge expansion of this subendothelial space and this you've had therefore a huge expansion of the intima the tunica intima and therefore it's called the neo intima this expansion of the intima now i also just want to mention that some of the vascular smooth muscle cells will come in and do this activity that i've shown here Others will actually do the same thing as the macrophages. They'll fall for the same trick as the macrophages because these vascular smooth muscle cells, they too have scavenger receptors on them, so can basically take in the LDL2. So some of these vascular smooth muscle cells will fall for the same trick as the macrophages and they too will become these blobby foam cells where they're full up with this lipid that's come in through the uh, endothelium from the blood. Okay, and that is the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis.